Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to our registration preview session. So excited to see so many of you here today. Uh, my name is Caitlin and I'm the National Recruitment Officer here at Carleton University and I'm so excited to be chatting with you guys today about registration. My history at Carleton involves a lot of work in this area and it's so exciting to see it all come together and see a new batch of Ravens getting ready to register for the fall and winter. Uh, today, if you have any questions, we have a question and answer function uh, available in the chat. So if you have any questions, pop them in there at any time. Uh, our, we have people in the background working on answering those. I would ask that you not include any personal information in your questions, be that your full name or your student number, so that our staff answering questions can provide you the best information that may also be helpful to other people. If you have specific questions with your information and that is really relevant, at the end of this, I'm going to give you lots of contact info for who you can follow up with. Um, but any general questions you have today would be more than happy to answer. Uh, we have staff from undergraduate recruitment and from the registrar's office here on hand today. So before I really jump into the presentation today, I want to make some space to acknowledge the fact that Carleton University is located on the traditional and unceded territories of the Algonquin Nation. Carleton is committed to reinvigorating efforts to support Indigenous learners and bring Indigenous knowledge into the classroom. Uh, we aren't always perfect, but we're committed to demonstrating institutional humility and being innovative in writing problematic relationships. This means uh, in classrooms and in events, uh, we recognize the space that we're on and the people that are around us. Um, Carleton has developed uh, 41 specific calls to action um, outlined in our Indigenous Kinemogwin Learning Together report, and it's a fantastic resource. If you're looking at it, I really encourage you um, to take a look at that uh, as you prepare to be a student here. So the exciting parts, you are transitioning to Carleton, you are finishing up your high school career or wherever you might be coming from. Uh, and let me be one of the first to say welcome, future Raven. We are so excited to have you. Um, as you transition, there'll be lots of supports to help you prepare for what the fall is to come. Um, that includes sessions that we run, like a session that we're running on Saturday called See You Start, um, where you can be introduced to registration, residents, uh, and our student experience and student life teams. Um, but it also includes other opportunities, things like first year connections, an opportunity to be paired with an upper year mentor um, to help develop goals and see what it is that you'd like to do in the future. They're here to support you uh, and kind of guide you through that transition into first year. It also looks like things like CU 1001, an, our online orientation program. It explores the five success pillars for students, things like academics, finances, campus life, wellness, and employability. Uh, this is a free program. It's available. I recommend that you take a look at it. Um, and it's something great to look at over the summer while you're preparing uh, to be a student here in the fall. It also looks like other orientation programs. Carleton does run a fall orientation program. Uh, it's in the process of being redeveloped to run based on uh, public health guidelines, but stay tuned to the Student Experience Office website for more information and for registration. You can also start taking a look at pathways to graduation. What can you expect through your program here? Registration, accepting your offer is a first step. Registration is kind of step number two. Uh, and then you've got a whole experience ahead of you. Uh, you've got years to come. What do those look like? Pathways to graduation will outline year over year what you can expect as a student and some of the opportunities that lay ahead of you. So I know a big question that a lot of students have right now is what are my courses going to look like in the fall? Um, what is Carleton doing? What are the plans? What can I expect? Um, there's lots going on. So before we jump into registration itself, um, I want to run over what some of the course formats will look like for this upcoming fall term. Um, we are recommending that students, where possible, come to campus and plan on being on campus as there will be a number of in-person classes available. Um, 
but there will also be some online classes. If you're not able to make it here uh, or you feel more comfortable with that, online course formats look like things like online synchronous classes that happen at a specific date and time each week uh, that see you live working with other students uh, and really prepare you for those. That looks like online asynchronous classes, which are much more flexible in nature. There's no specific date and time where you work on coursework but there are still deadlines and due dates in those classes. And then there's a lot of courses that run online as blended courses. Uh, you'll see a mixture of synchronous and asynchronous components um, that allow you to explore both of those different formats in the classroom. That may be office hours that are scheduled or tutorials that are scheduled, um, but it gives you an opportunity to kind of blend those together. Um, if you're taking online courses, you'll need um, and should prepare kind of a high speed internet connection and a computer, ideally with a webcam uh, and some kind of microphone, generally a headset so that you can participate in those online lectures themselves. Um, there will also be some in person classes. So these would be ones that are taking place on campus again in a variety of formats. Um, those are things uh, like courses in person with flexible attendance. We're calling that high flex or hybrid flexibility uh, where you can choose whether you will attend in person or online through Zoom and students participate together in the classroom. The classrooms are outfitted with webcams and microphones so that students can participate together in both formats. There are in person sections for the fall that will have alternatives for online students that may be recorded lectures, uh, online assessments and pieces like that, where most of the, the class will be done in person uh, and then alternatives will be provided to students who are taking those online. There are a number of in person sections in the fall that were, will require departmental permission if you plan to take them online. Uh, so if it's a mainly in person section, but they're open to reviewing online requests. You'd see that third format on the screen, the in person section with departmental permission for online. There are also a number of in person sections that are not suitable for online students. When you're looking at the course schedule, which we'll go through in the next bit of the presentation, uh, you'll see in the section information for the course, a section type where it will identify one of those seven options. If you have questions on these, the registration website has more information uh, and our student registration assistance team or the department offering the course can also help that way. So that's a lot of me talking. I start this off with a lot of talking to introduce you to things, uh, but now we get into the more exciting bit of, of how do you actually do this? How do we take it from uh, preparing, accepting an offer, figuring out what it is you want to do in university to actually translating that to registration and what you do next. Uh, and to do that, I have a member of our student registration assistance team here this morning, Nicoletta, who is going to run through the next few slides with you on how to prepare and what to do as part of registration. Uh, so I encourage you to take some notes on this. Uh, if you have um, Carleton Central or anything open and you'd like to follow along, now's a great time to do that. Uh, and if you have questions based on registration, I can see lots of those have been coming in. Uh, we've got lots of time to go through them. We'll be working on that uh, throughout the presentation. So uh, without further ado, I'll send that over to Nicoletta to run you through the new student registration. Hi, uh, thank you so much, Caitlin, for introducing me. Um, so like like she said, my name is Nicoletta. Um, I'm part of the student registration assistance team, um, and we're just a specialized group of students who are here all summer and um, up until the deadlines to register for courses, both in fall and winter, um, to help you through all of these, um, all of the registration process and any questions you may have about registration, and also just to kind of help you if you have questions and you don't know where to go, um, we're really well versed in most campus services, so we'll be able to tell you where you should go next um, if you are unsure where you should start off. So we're um, we're here all summer. We're really great. Um, so I'd encourage you to use our services um, 
And yeah, so to start, um, I'll tell you how um, you can get ready and begin to prepare for um, registration. So this is everything that you should know before you go to register um, and before you're going to start taking courses at Carleton. Um, so initially, I will mention uh, the registration dates and deadlines. These are really important to keep in mind um, as we are on um, like a strict schedule for registration and other such things. Um, so you'll see the first date already has passed. That one's May 31st, um, and that one was just for when the registration worksheet planning tool opened. Um, when, so that's just where you can see the fall and winter class schedule for the upcoming year and when the student registration assistance team became available that's when we began answering calls and emails um, so again these these are open um, and they will remain open um, all summer um, the next most important uh, deadline is when you can actually start registering. So you'll see June 28th, 29th, and 30th. Um, that is when time tickets will open for new incoming first year students. Um, it's randomized based on the last two digits of your student number. So if you um, are one of the first students to register this year, you'll be one of the last students to register next year and so on. It's, um, it's randomized in a uh, changes every year um, and those occur throughout the day between 8 30 and 3 um, and 3 o'clock um, these are in Eastern Standard Time all of the uh, um, times we're putting in these these presentations so keep that in mind um, and the time tickets are essentially the earliest date and time that you can begin to register so um, you don't have a specific um, like end date until September actually and that's the next date I'd like to mention. Um, so September 22nd is the last day to add or change a course for the fall term or for the fall winter um, courses that run all year so from all the way from September to um, April which I'll mention in an upcoming slide. Um, and then as for winter, um, registration remains open until January 24th. So it's about you have about two weeks after the beginning of classes to uh, continue with registration. Um, and then about another week after that, so in the case of the fall, um, you have until September 30th to withdraw from a course with a full financial adjustment. So that means that if you were taking three courses you and you drop one, uh, it means you'll get the money back that you were paying for um, for the third course. So um, that's also another good deadline. However, between the 22nd and the 30th, you won't be able to register in any additional courses. So uh, that's just a, a distinction between those two dates. So next we'll move into some of um, the very, very helpful registration tools that we have. Most of these can be found um, on a Carleton website, if not through the Registrar's Office website itself. So um, many of you will have already um, seen the your My Carleton One account, or if not yet, you will shortly, um, because this is where um, you'll be able to get access to um, all of your personalized information. So access to courses, access to your email address where all university communication will go to um, and access to um, the place where you can register for courses. Um, next, there's the undergraduate checklist, which is on our website, um, and it's just a few things uh, that you'll need to complete um, after accepting your offer. Um, and, but before starting classes, so it's a handy checklist to go through. Um, something I'll really highlight are these first year course selection guides. Um, so that is degree specific registration information um, for the first year of studies in your degree. So um, it'll essentially tell you which mandatory courses you need to take in your first year, um, and it may give you some information about electives and other such courses. Um, this is also available on our website. Um, we refer students to this resource all the time because it is um, excellent for preparing you for your first year and just knowing what you need to take. Um, so that can be found on our general registration website, which is that next resource. Um, part of our website is entirely for registration um, because that is a large part of what we do at the registrar's office. So if you have questions, that's always a good place to check. 
Um, next is Carlton Central. So that is the tool that um, I previously mentioned was where you would be able to register for your courses. I'll go into the process in much more depth um, momentarily, but um, that's just if you hear that word thrown around, it's just Carlton Central. It's just where you register. Um, I've already mentioned the student registration assistance team. Um, so the last two are the how to videos, which are on our website and on our YouTube channel, which um, can walk you through visually um, a number of frequently asked questions such as how to register um, and other such things. Um, and then last year, the lastly, the undergraduate calendar, which can show you um, a kind of scope of your whole degree and the mandatory courses and the distribution of courses throughout your entire degree, not just the first year. And moving on, I'll talk about some university lingo. So these are things you'll hear a lot of um, as you're registering um, or um, like, you know, talking to someone um, like one of the student registration assistants who will be um, providing you with some information. Um, so a prerequisite is a course you must complete before you can register in a course. So for example, you have to take Econ 1001 before you take Econ 1002. Usually you can't take them at the same time. So for example, you could take Econ 1001 in the fall and Econ 1002 in the winter, and that would fulfill your requirements. Next is preclusions, which are two courses that are so similar in content that you can't receive credit for both. Um, and that's just means that uh, you'll have to choose one or the other. Um, if you end up taking both of them, um, then you won't get credit for one of them. Um, so a common example is the first year seminar in uh, 1004 in English um, is not, you can't take it at the same time as English 1000 because they are too similar in content. Um, another important thing to note is that um, there are usually multiple sections offered for many courses um, and they will each be attributed a letter. So, for example, um, many first year courses especially have um, one, two, three, sometimes even eight or nine different sections um, to account for all of the students who may register in the courses. Um, and so you'll just want to take a look at a uh, different uh, sections. Different sections because often they'll be at different times or with different instructors and therefore um, may suit your needs and your schedule better. Lastly, linked components are just um, an additional component uh, to a, a lecture. So um, most courses that are worth credit are lectures. However, mainly in um, the sciences, however, in um, certain other areas as well. Um, there are laboratories, discussion groups, or tutorials that are required um, as part of that course. Um, you will be able to see them in Carlton Central listed next to the course um, and they have a zero credit value, but they are still mandatory for you to take. So um, that's something to keep in mind. If you see something worth a half a zero credit, um, you'll likely have to take it with um, whatever course it matches. Um, next, we'll go into course loads. So most courses are worth a half credit. Um, so those would be one term courses for the most part. Um, and like I said, most courses at Carleton. However, some courses that run from September to April are worth a full credit. Um, so you would be, um, if you are taking a full session course that lasts both semesters, um, you would be in one section for the whole semester. Um, so you would be, um, if you're in section A for the fall term and you register in that section, um, Carleton Central will, will automatically register you in section A for the winter term as well. Um, so that's important to know when you're building your schedule before registration opens um, so that you um, are building both schedules and they will be compatible with each other. Um, and so uh, for half because I wear in half credit courses, most students take 2.5 credits per term, which is about five 
uh, different courses um, and accumulates for five credits over the full academic year. Um, that's if you want to graduate in four years. Um, however, most students um, or plenty of students do take reduced course load, so it's entirely up to you how many courses you take. All right, and now I'll get into probably what you're all here for, which is planning your timetable and registration. Um, so I'll walk you through the actual process of registration, how to build your worksheet, and I'll provide some additional uh, dates and deadlines that are important in the registration process. Um, so to begin, this is what Car the Carleton Central's main menu looks like. Um, and this Carleton Central is not just for registration, um, but uh, for all intents of purpose, um, it is right now um, because this is um, that's what we're focusing on. Um, so you'll see this registration section. It's that fourth block there. Um, and uh, you'll see a section labeled getting started. Um, so on June 11th, all new first year students will be able to click on getting started and view their time ticket. Um, and like I said, that's just the earliest date and time that you can register for courses. This is what that page will look like. So in the top left, it'll show you your time ticket, um, but it will also give you some general information about your degree. Um, if you have any holds on your account that may prevent registration, um, which if you if you see that you would just need to reach out to whoever put the hold on your account or you can reach out to um, us at the registrar's office and we can uh, help you identify how to register um, and remove that hold. Um, so that'll be your first important um, page to take a look at. Um, so I'll provide a little bit more information about course selection itself. So for all of the um, bachelor degrees listed on the screen here, um, there is something called first year seminars. Um, and these are smaller courses of about 30 students that are designed to really help you with the transition from um, high school or a different institution into Carleton. Um, they're restricted to only first year students. Um, so you'll all be kind of in the same boat. And so they're a very beneficial course to take. Um, each student can only take one credit in first year seminars. Um, so that would mean either one full session course, as most of them are, so running from uh, September to April, or there are certain um, first year seminars that are worth a half credit. So you could either take one or two of those half credit first year seminars um, entirely up to you. Um, but they are um, a lot of fun. I've, I've taken um, one. I, I took one in my first year and um, it was one of my favorite courses for sure because um, you um, you get really close with all of the other students and the professor themselves. Um, so it's it's a good uh, recommendation for all first year students. Um, so this one um, applies only to BA students, um, at least in this capacity. Um, and that's, uh, this, these are something called breadth requirements, um, which are going to be mainly part of your electives, um, but they're to kind of broaden your education and make sure that you're not taking courses just in like your one specific um, area of your degree. Um, so Bachelor of Arts students need at least one credit, so usually that's two courses in three of the following categories or breadths. So those four categories are culture and communication, which usually has um, like language courses, um, some like English courses themselves, stuff like that science, engineering, and design, which is um, pretty self-explanatory. It'll have anything related to those three um, disciplines um, all, all under there. Then you have social sciences, um, which will also have a large number of courses uh, somewhat related to sciences, um, but slightly different. Um, I believe law and like um, cr um, criminology are both um, within that discipline. Um, and then finally, humanities. So again, it'll be um, one credit in three of those four categories, um, and you'll need to finish those by the end of your degree, though we do recommend that you start um, in your first year since you have much more space for electives in your first year as a student. 
All right, so now um, building your draft timetable. So again, you'll, you may recognize this as um, part of Carlton Central from a few couple slides ago. Um, so to build your draft timetable, um, you would just go to this section labeled build your timetable slash registration. Um, so there's a lot of things that you can do with this. You can um, take a look at all of the courses that are offered. Um, you can manage unavailable times. You can search for courses um, and then you can um, make those draft timetables. Take a look at what your schedule will look like, all of that. Um, and then once your time ticket has opened, you can actually register for them. Um, and the best part about this is you can do both fall and winter at the same time. So um, once you build your fall term courses, you can go ahead and build your winter term courses and register for both as soon as your time ticket opens. Um, so again, this is just the main menu of Carleton Central. You'll go to registration, click on build your timetable registration, and then you'll have to choose a term. Um, so in this case, fall 2021 or winter 2022. Um, and um, you'll be able to take a look at the courses offered in both semesters. Um, usually there are different course offerings in each semester, so we recommend that you take a look at both of them, or if you can't find a course, check the other before you see it. Um, students who are in a certain degree, such as engineering, architecture, industrial design, or information technology, um, will have something called block registration, which means that your mandatory courses are pre-selected for you and you can't change those. Um, so the only thing you may have to add to your worksheet is an elective. Um, and if you have any questions or concerns about the courses that are um, built into your schedule, so the ones that will be labeled mandatory, you'll just have to reach out to the department of your major um, to fix that. Um, so once you've selected the term, you'll see this search for courses page, and this is where you can refine your search. So the two sections or three sections actually that I'll really draw your attention to are the first three there. So course level, you'll always be undergraduate if you're an undergraduate student um, so that you're only seeing um, that level of courses. Um, then you'll see the subject section um, and each course falls into one, one of the subjects um, that we offer at Carleton. Um, so you'll just need to look through there um, until you find the courses that are mandatory for your degree um, and then also go back and find the electives. The next one I'll mention is course number and that just refers to um, the level that you're looking at. So most of your courses will be 1000 level courses we call them. Um, so that means they'll be labeled with a one um, and if you choose a subject, let's say English, um, and you put one in the course number section, you will only get 1000 level English courses. If you choose a subject such as uh, history um, and you just click on search, you'll see all levels, not just 1000 levels. So if you wanna refine your search, that's, um, that's important too. Um, search by CRN is only if you have a spe one specific course you want to take a look at. So usually you don't, you can disregard that section. Um, and then again, special criteria um, is not super relevant in, unless you're registering later in the term. So we recommend that you just um, focus on those first three sections of um, course level, subject and course number. Um, the only um, one that I may recommend that you use other than um, those three would be maybe manage unavailable times. If you have a work schedule or um, some other commitment, um, you can block off certain times um, in your schedule where um, no courses will show up uh, there. So if you set those um, times as unavailable, any courses that would take place during any part of that, uh, that time frame, um, won't show up when you search for them. Um, so once you've uh, chosen a subject and potentially a course number, you will get search results. So anything that adheres to um, the search criteria that you put, put in will um, appear. Sometimes it's a long list, sometimes it's only one or two courses. So here you'll see um, Econ 1001. Um, you'll see that lecture 
And then you'll also see that discussion group. So that's one of the linked components that we mentioned earlier. Um, again, that's worth a zero credit, but it is mandatory to complete the course. Um, another important um, element of this page is that any blue link that you click on on this page will take you to a course details page um, where there will be more information regarding the course, such as a detailed course description, um, the, uh, details about um, where it's taking place, um, and it'll also mention um, any restrictions that may be on the course. Um, the last thing I'll mention about this page is that this here in that section information um, area is where you'll see whether it's online or in person. So as Caitlin mentioned previously, all courses, at least for fall 2021, will say online or in person in this right on this front page in section information. Um, so that's really important to note when you're choosing courses um, for the fall term. So um, once you've chosen courses um, and you like the selection, um, you can add them to your worksheet. So you would do that by um, clicking on the white box that's next to the course. So actually, Caitlin, if you wouldn't mind going to back a slide so I can just um, indicate. So you'll see the select section, um, just that white box in that on the furthest left. If you click that off, um, you will be choosing um, that course um, or that section of the course. Um, and then once you click on proceed to worksheet, it'll add it to your worksheet. Um, and then you'll be able to see it um, as, as a list. So whatever courses that you add will show up um, in this draft worksheet. Um, so what you, uh, the good part about these worksheets um, is that you can make as many of them as you'd like. Um, actually, I think there may be a capacity of 10 if I'm not mistaken, but um, you can try out a bunch of different options for your courses. Um, you can add um, as many courses as you'd like um, to it and then just kind of see um, what works best in your schedule. Um, and then you can save some of those draft worksheets um, by naming them and then clicking Save As. And then the next time you log into Carleton Central, you'll be able to go back and see your progress already. Um, so this makes it really handy um, to um, build everything ahead of time so that when registration opens later um, in um, later in June for first year students, um, you can just go ahead and register with the worksheet you already have. Um, and this is why we uh, also recommend making multiple worksheets. So just in case one of your courses fills up or there's an error or something, um, then you'll have um, something else to fall back on and you'll have already um, made arrangements for that. Um, and on this page, if you scroll down, you can see a visual representation of your worksheet, um, which will just kind of block out where each of your courses are. Um, so you'll see here um, the Econ 1001 lecture takes place at about, um, I actually can't see that, but I think it's um, six o'clock at night um, and the laboratory section is right before it. So um, if you're more of a visual person, this is really helpful to see how close together your courses are, um, how spread out they are. So that's, um, that's a really nice feature as well. Um, and then if you take a look at that and you see any um, red, like for overlapping courses, um, you will need to fix that because course conflicts, uh, despite the online manner of our um, of the of this year that's coming up, um, they will be um, we're we're not allowed to register in course conflicts. So you'll need to choose another course so that you don't have any um, overlapping red ones. Um, and then for BA students, um, you can search for breadth courses directly. So in this case, you would just need to choose um, a breadth area. It'll be just under course number. So only BA students will see this, um, this option to search by breadth. Um, you'll have to choose one of the four different breadth options and you'll need to include a course number. 
So um, usually, again, you'll want to put in one, but um, for some of these electives, um, sometimes you can uh, take second year courses. There are a number of them that are available to first year students. It's just about taking a look at them um, and keeping your eye open for what you might be interested in. Um, yeah, and so again, it'll it's the exact same thing um, as uh, searching for any other course, except this time you'll be seeing multiple subjects at a time. So here you'll, you're seeing um, African studies as well as um, applied linguistics and discourse studies, um, as well as Canadian studies. Um, so it'll just show any course that falls under that breadth and would count towards that specific breadth. Um, so that makes it really easy to choose electives um, in your first year, especially if you're not too sure what, um, what will count for which breadth. Um, all right, and then uh, for the actual registration process, um, it's uh, just once your uh, worksheet is built and you're content with everything that you have on there, you have all your mandatory courses, you're up to um, a number of credits that you feel comfortable with, whether that's 2.5 or even just 1.5 if you're looking at taking a reduced course load, um, then you'll be able to see all of them together. Um, the one thing I'll get you to um, keep in mind is that sometimes if there are any issues with you taking a course, um, there will be a warning. So you'll see there's um, a section on the farthest right labeled warnings. Um, if there was some issue with a course, so let's say you added a fourth year course by accident that's only available to fourth year students, or if you have a conflict, um, or if you have a course that's um, for students in a specific degree program that you don't fit into, um, you would get a blue link here labeled click here to view your registration warnings. If you click that, it'll tell you the exact issue. Um, and if you don't know how to resolve that issue, you can always call the registrar's office and we can help you out with that. Um, or again, you can email us. We're available um, by both methods of, of contact. Um, so that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, so once your registration uh, timetable is built, um, you don't have any warnings um, and you've included everything that you need to include for your first year, um, then you can go ahead and proceed to registration. Um, so that'll be just under where uh, your course worksheet is listed. Um, and then um, once you click on proceed to registration, it'll take you to a page called add or drop classes. Um, so the courses will auto populate as numbers. Um, so these are the course reference numbers that I mentioned earlier um, in when I was mentioning the search criteria. Um, so that's they're just numbers that refer to that specific course. So um, every single course offered at Carleton will have its own unique CRN. So even if it's um, there's let's say three different sections of Econ 1001, um, they'll each have three different CRNs and each tutorial will also have its own unique CRN. So no two courses will have the same CRN, even if it's the same course. Um, so even though you've clicked on proceed to registration, you see the numbers here, you are not registered until you click submit right there. Um, that's the most important part. Um, so once you click on submit though, um, your courses will show up um, and it'll say current schedule. Um, it'll tell you that when you registered for that course. So if, if it was May 7th, 2019, if that was today, you would see registered on May 7th, 2019, and then you would see some of the course information listed. Um, so yeah, that'll all be listed on this add drop classes page. Um, this confirms that you are registered for the course. Um, however, sometimes um, if you um, don't notice a uh, registration warning um, or if there's some error um, because let's say you try to add too many courses, um, you, let's say you try to add three credits rather than the maximum 2.5, you'll get a registration uh, error that'll say why you can't register for the course. 
um, you'll need to review that error um, and um, figure out how you can um, register in the course properly. Um, again, as always, the SRA can help with that. So if you don't know what to do about that, uh, you can always call or email us. Um, and then once you've done that for the fall term, you would need to go back and do it for the winter term as well. So that's uh, one last um, uh, comment on that. Um, so for some courses as well, there is a waitlisting feature. So um, sometimes a course fills up before you're able to register, um, but um, then you can add yourself to the waitlist for the course so that if someone drops the course, um, you will be notified and you can register for it. Um, so not every course has, um, has a waitlist, um, but many of them do. Um, so all you'll need to do is once you um, attempt to register, um, so you went proceed to registration and then you clicked submit, um, it, the course will come up as a registration ad error. It'll say this course is full, but you may join the waitlist. All you'll need to do is click that action bar, um, choose waitlist, and then click on submit again. Um, and then you'll see the course on your current schedule. It'll say waitlisted on the date that you did that. Um, and, you'll, and it'll be listed as zero credits because you're currently not registered for the course. Um, and then uh, if you'd like to see your position on the waitlist, so um, if you're first, if you're 10th, if you're 100th in line on the waitlist, depending on how many um, positions there are available, um, you can go to um, back to the main menu of Carleton Central, um, go to the section that labeled student timetable, um, and then at the bottom of the page, click on detail schedule, which will list all of the courses that you're registered in, as well as all of the courses that you're waitlisted for. Um, and that's where you can find your waitlist position um, as illustrated here. So that's what it'll look like. Um, if you're number one in the waitlist position, you will be sent a confirmation email to your Carleton email address, um, and you will have 24 hours from the time you receive that email um, to register in the course. So um, that means that if you, if it's five o'clock in the morning um, and you get the email, you have until five o'clock in the morning the next day um, to register. Um, but if you um, don't register in that time frame, um, then you will be booted off the waitlist and um, you would, in order to get into that same course, you would have to go back and start at the end of the line on the waitlist and your place in the course would go to the next person. Um, the other thing is that um, sometimes if there is an issue with a course or you can't access a course for whatever reason, um, you can go ahead and submit a registration override request. Usually this is um, if departmental permission is required or um, if there's some other issue with your registration. Um, and you would just go back to the main menu of Carleton Central, click on the section labeled registration override requests, um, and then choose a term similar to how you did with build your timetable registration. Um, and then you would go through um, this information here. Um, so essentially what this says is that um, an override request does not guarantee you access to a course um, and that it will be sent to the department delivering the course. So if you submit an override request form to the math department, um, it's the math department who will decide whether you can get into the course or not. Um, the other thing to mention about that is that um, you will receive an email um, about whether you are approved or denied um, and whether and if you are approved for the course, you will need to register for it um, in the exact same way you registered for all your other courses. So you'll need to put it on um, your worksheet and then go to uh, proceed to registration and submit in order to register. It will not automatically register you for the course. Um, so for the process itself, um, you'll also need to register for the course first. So what I mean by that is attempt to register. And then once you get 
um, a registration warning on the add drop classes page that I mentioned. Um, it, um, if whatever reason you um, are having issues registering for the course will appear. Um, and then you'll be able to go to this page and submit the override request form. Um, you'll just have to choose the course from a list or put in its CRN. Um, choose why you're submitting the override request and then potentially add some comments um, to the uh, to the override request to explain a little bit further um, and then submit it. Um, and the override request process usually takes about three to five business days, but sometimes longer in peak periods. Um, the last thing I will discuss is dropping courses. So if you realize you were in the wrong course or you decide you don't like the elective you chose, um, what you can do is go back to that add drop classes page, um, go to the action menu and choose drop from the drop down menu. Um, so depending on what day it is um, in the semester, it'll say different things. So drop financial is means that you will get a fee reassessment. So if it's before that September 30th date, it will be drop financial. If it's after that September 30th date, even if it's October 1st, um, you will uh, see drop academic, and that means that you will not be refunded for the course, um, and the course will show up as withdrawn on your transcript. Um, so it's really important that if um, that as soon as you know you want to drop a class, um, that you do so um, as soon as you can, um, so that you um, can try and either receive funding back, um, and so that it doesn't end up on your transcript as well. Um, and then lastly, uh, once you have registered in your courses, you can take a look at uh, tuition fees um, in the calculate amount to pay section. Um, so that's also under the registration section, um, which is um, under the student account section. Um, if you have any questions about tuition fee or fee payments, uh, you can direct them to student accounts receivable. Um, uh, their email address is listed on the screen here, um, but you can also find it on their website, um, so that's really helpful. Um, and then I'll also get you to note that the um, payment deadlines for uh, the fall term and the winter term are different, um, so that's something to notice as well. August 25th for fall and November 25th for winter, um, so keep that in mind as well. Um, Yes. And then so we'll have also some more dates and deadlines, which just refer to dropping courses. So um, as previously mentioned, September 30th is the last day to drop a fall term course or a fall winter course that runs a full session um, to get a full fee reassessment. Um, whereas January 31st is the last day to drop a winter term course. Um, or the winter term uh, section of a full uh, full session course. Um, I will mention that if you are in a full session course and you decide to drop the winter section of it, you won't receive any credit. You won't receive the half credit for the term that you completed. Um, and then as for academic drop deadlines, those are just the last day of classes. Um, so if you are doing poorly in a class or you don't think you can write the exam or you need to withdraw from the course for any other reason whatsoever, you have until the last day of classes to drop it um, with no academic penalty. Um, so yeah, that's also important to note. Um, and then yeah, just at the end to reiterate, um, if you have any questions whatsoever, um, please contact the student registration assistance team. Um, we have a really great team this year. I am biased in saying that, but um, I it's it's going very well so far, even though it's just been a few days. Um, we are available every day from 8.30 to 4.30, um, Monday to Friday, um, all the way for, um, until September 22nd. 
um, which is the last day to register in a course for the fall term. Um, and then we return when the university opens in January until the last day to register for winter terms um, in late January. Um, so I really hope that you guys got a lot of out, of out of this presentation and that you'll be using the student registration assistance team because we love answering questions and helping you out. Um, yeah, and that's uh, just some more of our contact information. That's all that I have to say um, about that. So, um, congrats. Amazing. Thank you so much. For that. <laughs> that was an of awesome course. presentation. Thank you. Um, yeah, we've had a lot of questions come through. Um, I'll just have you mute your mic front. There we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let, let Nicoletta jump in to those Q&As that you guys have been publishing. It's been great questions coming the whole way through. Um, so that she can work on uh, trying to get some more answers out to you. And I'm going to highlight some of those key questions that I'm seeing come through over and over um, so that we can maybe get you some of that information a little bit faster. So there's lots of questions on how do I know what courses to take? What do I take? Right? That's a big question for a lot of students at your first year course selection guides available at carlton.ca slash registration will outline your first year courses. So students in engineering with courses about block registration, that's a great place to go. They've got more info there. Um, if you're having issues figuring out what courses you need to take or who to talk to in your department, a lot of that information is also in your first year course selection guide. So go take a look at those. I think that'll be a great resource for you. Um, lots of questions about time tickets. So your time ticket again is just when you can start to register and um, you'll be able to see your time ticket starting on June 11th. Uh, so still some time before that comes out, but it's just when you can start to register. So if you're not available at your specific time ticket because you're working, that's totally fine. Uh, you can register when you're home that night or the next day. Registration will be open through until the end of uh, registration in, in mid-September. So you've got lots of time there. Um, if you have questions about registration, um, the student registration assistance team is going to be super helpful for you. They're available by email, by chat and by phone, um, so you can always follow up with them there. And this session is being recorded, so it'll be posted on the admissions office website at admissions.carlton.ca slash fall registration, and you'll be able to re review it then at your own speed with more information. So um, we're going to work through getting through a number of your questions that are still there. Uh, don't worry, we're going to get to as many of them as we can. Uh, we've got lots of people in the background trying to work on those. You've submitted your question more than once. We may only get to it once, um, but we are working to get to, through those as best we can. I would like to say thank you once again for joining us today. It's been amazing to see so many of you so excited to come to Carleton in the fall. We are so excited to have you. Uh, the start of the fall term on campus is always exciting. It's even more exciting this year uh, with uh, hopefully seeing some of you back on campus. It's been a long year for us to, to do things online and while we get to talk to lots of people from lots of different places that way, uh, we're really excited to get back onto campus just like you guys are. So thank you for joining us today. If you'd like to stay and get some of your questions answered, we'll leave that question uh, and answer uh, open for the next few minutes to submit questions and then we'll continue answering them uh, for a few minutes after that. Uh, but if you've had all of your questions answered or you've got somewhere to go, don't worry, you can take off now. Uh, stay tuned uh, for more information and more events as they come up and we really look forward to having you in the fall. Have a great day.